Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch. This is another Dragonair Silent Gods video. Today, we're gonna have a look at all of the new artifacts that are coming to the game in Season 4. Currently, I am on a test server, guys, so I have access to all of the new features. I've already made different videos covering the new heroes, the new guaranteed legendary, the new changes coming to the season in terms of gear and other things like that, so feel free to check them out. This video is brought to you by Dragonair Silent God, so I just want to say a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are new around here, new on the channel, and you haven't played Dragonair Silent Gods just yet, or you want to help and support the channel, you can download the game by using the link in the description down below, or in the comment, or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. Without further ado, new artifacts coming in Season 4. Let me head over to Exchange, and probably you're gonna, you're gonna notice we have Epic, Legendary, Mythic artifacts. Where are the rares? What happened to them? I'm not sure if this is some sort of a mistake, guys, but all of the Legendaries are now Mythical. All of the Epics are now Legendary, and all of the Epic, uh, the rares are now Epics. So it's a... <laughs> It's a pretty interesting uh, change right here. It's going to take me a while to get used to it. Uh, no uh, rare slash epic uh, artifact, guys. We do have some new epic artifacts, aka legendaries for this season, that uh, are being added uh, to the game. So by the looks of it, we have two of them to be more specific, and that is the Ring of Spirit Wood. You're getting HP and defense percentage. The wearer gains... A 240, uh, uh, 240 resistance when inflicted with control. I really don't get it why they're trying to force so many resistance epic uh, artifacts. Because they're not really good. You're not really going to use them anywhere. I'm never going to use this one. It's kind of like a trash one. I'm not a big fan of this one, to be honest. Uh, let me know your thoughts, though, in the comments down below. Then we have the Matriarch's Gem. This looks pretty awesome. Uh, you're getting attack and attack percentage. The wearer gains 40% crit rate at max level. If the crit rate is higher than 100%, 100% of the excessive crit rate will be converted into crit damage. So let's just say you have, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, let's just say you have 95 crit rate and you're equipping this uh, uh, artifact, you're going to have an additional 35% crit rate, which will be converted into crit damage. So that's a pretty awesome artifact, and you're getting attack from it, an attack percentage. It's going to be nice for damage dealers. Then moving over to the legendary artifacts, aka mythicals now. Uh, we have no exclusives this season, which is a good thing. Uh, definitely a good thing. But moving over to the rest of them. Uh, we have quite a few of them. Some of them have some badass looking uh, animations, images in here, guys. So we have the Mystic Conch, which is a new one, all the way down to the Curse of Silence. So the Mystic Conch gives you attack and attack percentage. When the wearer uh, releases an ultimate skill and the enemy resists the inflicted debuff, there is a chance, a 100% chance, to inflict defense penalty 2 on the enemy for 10 seconds instead. This state cannot be resisted and only takes effect on each enemy once. Wow! So basically, this is like a new, a new meta. If you have damage dealer, let's just take a Sigrid, for example, as an idea. So you give no accuracy to Sigrid, you give her this artifact. She's going to basically uh, resist to apply the attack penalty and the heal reduction. And then at max level, it's going to be a 100% chance to land defense penalty with this artifact. 100%. So a single hit, you, you got it on it. It's going to be a pretty awesome, uh, awesome one. Now... There are not too many characters in the game that can actually really benefit from it and deal damage at the same time. Because you want to you wanna use it on uh, characters that deal damage. You're getting attack from here. But it's a pretty nice artifact. I was very curious to see if they're doing something with the de defense penalty uh, in the game. Then you have the golden uh, alarm. Gives you attack and attack percentage again. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to translate what this means, uh, unfortunately. Uh, not really sure, but it goes all the way up to 40%. I guess it's going to give you something for 20 seconds, maybe. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I am on the test server, so some things might still be a bit, uh, bit messed up. Then we have the Poison of Swamp. This gives you attack and crit damage. When the wearer receives healing, additionally gains 10% crit rate 
and 15% crit damage for 15 seconds, up to 3 stacks. Ooh, Frerbart. Imagine building a, building a team with this around Frerbart. That's going to be a pretty awesome one because you're going to get the healing super quick. You're going to gain 30% crit rate and 45% crit damage for 15 seconds uh, whenever this, uh, this happens. And with Frerbart, you're never going to run out of it, you know? That's a, that's a pretty, interesting, uh, pretty interesting one too. Pact with the Devil. Attack and crit rate. When the wearer releases a non-AoE ultimate skill, the damage dealt is increased by 10%. When releasing again on the same enemy, the damage dealt is increased by 20%. And there's a 100% chance to inflict an undispellable healing reduction on the target for 10 seconds. Okay, that's a strange one. Now, this would have been much better with defense down instead of the healing reduction. Because it, it would make just generally more sense, you know. But this is a pretty, pretty solid one. Like, if you're uh, running it on characters like Tunnel Nun, characters that have single target damage, you know, uh, it's going to be a nice one. Like, you can get 20% additional damage and uh, get the stats on it. You know, it's, it's a pretty nice one. Interesting. Then, I'm very curious about the Punisher's Whip. Just looks like so awesome. You're getting attack and attack percentage. When the wearer attacks an enemy with a shield, the damage dealt to the shield is increased by 50%. When removing the shield through dealing damage, the wearer deals additional 500% attack physical damage to the enemy. This can be nice versus the Grave of Curse versus the uh, Ice Domain. And it can be nice, of course, if any of the bosses got changes for PvP. It can be very nice again. So it's a pretty interesting one. Then we have the Lost Pearl in Desert. This looks pretty cool too. You're getting HP and Accuracy. The wearer recharges their ultimate energy by 25% every time they release their ultimate skill. When the effect is triggered again, the ultimate energy obtained through this effect will be reduced by 5%, down to 5% at least. So let me just check this again. Recharges their ultimate energy by 25%, every time they release their ultimate skill. So I'm using the ultimate skill, bang, gain 25% ultimate energy. Using it again, and I'm dropping to 20%. Using it again, and I'm dropping to 15%. Is that what, I, what it means? I guess so, I guess so, yeah. Interesting. I like that you're gaining this, but the main thing is, you need to use the skill in order to get it done, and... Uh, while it seems like it's intended for PvP because you do five fights and then you're not really getting value out of this artifact, uh, five ultimates and you're not really getting value out of the, the artifact, I feel like it's reducing it too much. It's, it's giving you such a big penalty that it's, it's not great. It shouldn't have a penalty every time you're using it to be reduced. It should be 25% flat every time you're using it. And that would be awesome. Then we have the Sundial of uh, Origin. HP and Accuracy. The wearer recharges their next battle skill by 25% every time they release their battle skill, and it's pretty much the same cup of uh, tea like the previous one. It will get reduced every time you're using it. Uh, it's nice, but again, it's just meant for PvP, and I'm, I'm not a fan of having that penalty, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, though. And we have the final one, Curse of Silence, Defense and Resistance. As the battle starts, all allies gain 4 stacks of resistance up. Each stack of it grants uh, 25 resistance. When the wearer releases their ultimate skill, they lose 1 stack of it, with 1 stack of the lower limit. Okay, again resistance. Man, I'm not a fan of this resistance thingy though. Like, uh, I like that this is at the beginning of the battle. So, as soon as the battle starts, all allies gain the stack of resistance up. And you can basically get 25 uh, resistance. But it's just 25 resistance, which is so not impactful at all. Okay? It's not impactful at all. Then when the wearer releases their ultimate skill, they lose a stack. Now, because there are four stacks, you start directly with 100 resistance, which can be nice. So now you will have the possibility to basically uh, go and, uh, go and uh, just do different... Uh, uh, different strats in uh, the Feymander versus the bosses or uh, in the different areas where you need resistance, you know. Uh, 
you can quickly kill those bosses. Equip this on one of the supports and call it, uh, call it a day. That's all for uh, artifacts, guys. We do have two more that are coming from the Fey Mander and from the Pillar of Trials. I'm quickly gonna try to find them for you to uh, quickly show you those two artifacts uh, as well. Uh, let me just see where they can uh, be. So probably these two. We have the Bottle of Luminance, Defense and HP. When an ally's HP falls below 40%, heals them by 15% of their max HP. This skill takes effect up to four, uh, four stacks or up to four times. Up to four times, I would assume. Only once every 20 seconds. So this is pretty weak. This is pretty weak. You're just getting a 15% max HP heal. And only four times every 20 seconds. Not, not a big fan of it. Then this one right here. It can be good. It can be good early on to push on the Grave of Venom with the tanks. You know, that, that's about it. It can be good for that for a little bit. Then you have the Chest of Radiance. HP and attack. When the team activates three uh, elemental affinity, all allies gain up to 5% attack and defense. When five elemental affinity is activated, this effect becomes uh, doubled. So you're going to get 10% attack and you're going to get 10% defense uh, on all of your team when you have a five-man elemental affinity. I think that's nice. I think that's very nice. This will actually be much better than the pipe organ, guys. The pipe organ will basically give 10% uh, attack for the range wearers, right? And that can be, of course, up to 500 attack, but this will be 10% of each target's individual attack and defense. It's going to be solid. It's going to be a very nice artifact, this one. I'm liking it. Definitely a fan of, uh, of this one. I think this might be from the Fey Mander. I'm not sure exactly. But definitely looking uh, looking forward to, to that. Now, Walker's Trail, we don't really have much in here to check the, the, the battle pass if we have anything funky. But that was all for this video, guys. Thanks again to Dragoner for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys want to download the game, you can do so by clicking the link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Which one of the new artifacts is your most favorite one. Now, if you guys want to see all of the new heroes that are being added to Dragonair in Season 4, you can click on this video up here to check all of that out.